technology. All right. So apparently what's been happening is that my Facebook does not know where I am. Um, and I freaked it out. All right. So you know what? I'm going to do it like this and we will deal with it later. Cool. Because you guys know that I go live. 1 p.m. not 11 which it is in New Zealand which is not where I am it's all just a bit too much right so let me write down my little notes oh my gosh that was very annoying hidden toxicity excellent all right hopefully Hopefully you find me. Hopefully everyone finds me, even though I'm not in the event and it's all weird because Facebook. Hi, Jane. I'm glad you found me. Uh, I need to talk to you. I will send you a message at some point, probably a voice message because life is hectic. Right. Oh, cool, cool. Give us a wave. Give us a hi. Good morning, Shireen. Lovely to see you. I love that you're jumping on these lives. I could see there's a few sets of eyeballs. So make sure to say hi. Give me a wave in the comments. Let me know you're here. Thank you for joining me. Um, thanks for finding me. I'm glad you found me. Should I tag everyone? I feel like that's um, really obnoxious. Is anyone else finding the at everyone tag really obnoxious? Um, somebody said that they're using it to delete themselves from groups. <laughs> People that are using that. All right. So uh, let's get underway because we're a couple of minutes in and we're a couple of minutes late because Facebook. Um, last week, if you were on or if you caught the replay... Uh, or if you want to go find it um, stored in the group. Uh, we talked about toxic people. So how to get rid of toxic people out of your life. Excuse me. Um, and uh, beautiful. Um, how to get toxic people. If we're jumping a bit because you've got to go to work. Yeah, oh, that sounds very reasonable, Shireen. We're all grateful that you go to work. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so last week we had a bit of a discussion about toxic people, um, toxic behaviours in people, and that was a, a really interesting conversation. You guys seemed to, there was a lot of, a lot of back and forth, a lot of comments, and, and a lot of open, honest discussion about why, why can we not, why is it so hard to just tell people that are assholes to us to just fuck off, Right. Why do we keep allowing them mental real estate in our head um, when they're no good for us? So we had that conversation about toxic people or people exhibiting toxic behaviours, you know, not supporters, not, you know, they don't have your best interests at heart and they just make your life awful, right? And that was great. And I was thinking after we had that conversation, you and I, um, you and you, all, all of you and I, <laughs> and I was thinking about this idea of like toxic, right? It's become a bit of a buzzword lately, right? The last couple of years, people are talking about toxic people, toxic relationships, toxic. We want to get toxins out of our food. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today about another element that of, of toxicity that maybe you're not as aware that you are allowing, consuming, um, practicing maybe. Um, and <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Let me just check one thing. Um, All right, so, um, cool, cool. 
So I wanted to talk about this whole toxic thing, right? So you're probably, you know, aware that you want to eat tox free, right? You, you don't want to be consuming toxins. Um, some of us are very sensitive about our like chemical exposures. I don't know where the binging is coming from people. Um, you know, our um, exposures um, to to chemicals. Um, we might want to be mindful of what materials we're wearing. Um, you know, whether we're inhaling, um, what's it called? Fumes, right? Um, so we're mindful of toxins we're putting into our body. We're being careful about toxic people that we don't necessarily want in our life. Um, what is it that you're trying to cleanse yourself of? What are you trying to release out of your body? Why are we focused on not having toxins in our body and our life? Oh, enjoy the hairdresser, Jane. So I'm curious, what is it for you that... So if you're aware of this whole toxin thing, right? We don't want toxins. We don't want toxins in our body. We want to be drinking, you know, eating clean food, drinking clean water. What is the purpose of eliminating these toxins, whether it's food or water or people? What's the motivation behind that? What are you trying to achieve or what are you trying to clear out of your system? All right? What is it for you? What's the purpose of this kind of interest or for some, maybe, you know, a keen interest, dare I say, an obsession with eliminating toxins, right? Toxic people, toxic food. No, no, no. I want to be what? What's what's the end state goal here? Chuck it in the comments. Let me know. Let's have a conversation. Right? Self-preservation, says Shireen. Interesting. Interesting. Is that in context of people? Toxic people? Give me give me some more clues. What's the goal? What are we trying to achieve through putting up those boundaries? I'm not eating that. I'm not drinking that. I'm not spending time with that person, right? Because that's what it is. It's, it's, it's boundaries. It's saying this is, I don't do that. That's toxic or I don't allow that, right? So it is a boundary thing. Mental and physical health. Yeah, cool. Love it. It's really important. And thank you for sharing your your awarenesses and your insights. Because here's the thing. You can eat as clean as you like. You can be a strict vegan who only eats organic, that washes everything in the sink with special wash. Um, Ashley says for inflammation, right? So you're avoiding toxins because you don't want inflammation. Interesting. Yeah, cool. I have multiple inflammatory illnesses, autoimmune diseases. I totally get wanting to not have inflammation. Awesome. Really key. Thank you so much. So what I wanted to bring to your attention today is you might be eating all the right stuff. You might be drinking, you know, the purest of water from, from some mountain. You may have cut out negative people in your life, toxic people in your life. You're mindful about what you're reading, what you're watching on television. You know, and I, I meet a lot of people these days who say, oh, I don't watch the news um, because they feel that it's overly negative and that is negatively influencing them and that's cool that's their choice today today our topic is the hidden toxin that is in you right that's what we're talking about today and what if i told you that there is 
a a toxicity or a source of toxins that lives within you that you may be feeding every day that you may be taking on from others and that you might be holding on to like it might be an old toxin you are holding on to it for a long long time would you like the antidote to this toxin okay so one i'm going to tell you what it is and two i'm going to give you what the antidote is let me know if that interests you right just put a yes in the comments or a smiley face or a thumbs up or send me some love hearts and let me know yes this would be useful because i'm working so hard to eliminate these toxic elements in my life what's the thing left right if that's where you're at right now just drop something in the comments that lets me know yes i want to know what is this hidden toxic thing and how do i get rid of it right and if i get three comments i will share it with you that's one that's a yes from shireen it's a smiley face from warren come on ashley do you want to know <laughs> Yes, says Kate. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think this is really going to help, right? Yes, says Ashley. Perfect. Four. You guys are awesome. Love you heaps. All right. Here's the thing. <laughs> Three smiley faces from Warren. If you... So the toxicity, right? The hidden toxicity is your self-talk right your words now let's establish a couple of rules one like let's accept a few things on face value one words have power okay now whether you think they have power because words can hurt somebody's feelings or whether you understand that they have power because words and voice are energy and energy has power either way words have power okay like they just do so let's just accept that. Words have power. The words you are using to speak to yourself are infinitely more powerful than the words that other people speak to you. For sure, says Ashley. Absolutely. Someone drop me a fucking Snoop Dogg gif, right? Listen. The words that you hear from other people, you have the ability to filter it out. You're like, whatever. Oh, I didn't even hear them say that, right? You might say, oh, I've no, I didn't even hear them say that, right? It's because we filter it out. We delete it. We might go, oh, I thought they said something else, right? Which was not as harsh. And we distort it. And so we make it fit for us. And we're like, oh, no, I didn't realize they said that. I thought they said, right? So we delete it. We distort it. Or... Um, it sort of blends into the background noise. So words that are coming towards us from external, we have some capacities, we have some strategies to go, yeah, no thanks, dude. Not interested in that. No, thank you. I don't want to hear that. Oh, what? I didn't even hear them say that. Oh, did they yell something nasty? Oh, well, cool. Didn't even bother me, right? And we can, um you know, have it sort of bounce off and not have much of an impact, potentially, right? Sometimes people's words cut deep, but there is that flexibility with that. How you speak to yourself, the words that you think and you don't say are infinitely more powerful because they go straight from part of your brain that, says, that thinks it Boom! Straight into the subconscious. Right? Zero filter. <laughs> so when you say something like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. Right? That is truth. And it goes straight back in there. Right? What do you say when you look in the mirror? Oh, that's all a bit wobbly and jubbly and that doesn't look the way I want it to. And oh, this is a bit too low and this is a bit too saggy and this is a bit too soft, right? Whatever. 
right? All that stuff that you are saying to yourself. What do you say to yourself when you um, like drop a dish or smash a glass or fucking burn the toast? What do you say to yourself? Oh, that's okay. I'll make some more toast. Oh no, that was the end of the bread. Oh well, I'll just go get some more bread, right? Do ya? <laughs> do you really? Let me know in the comments if you do that. Or do you go, fuck, I burnt the toast again. I'm so fucking scatterbrained. And then you go to the cupboard and you're like, oh, right, cool. I don't have any more bread because I'm a fucking idiot, right? Now, if those are not your words, don't take on those words, right? Um, you, I'm probably reveal. I don't eat bread, right? So it's not an example of me. But that self-talk, that can be, if it's negative, if it's berating, right? You've probably cut people out of your life or you're looking to cut people out of your life that speak to you like that, right? If you're in a relationship and someone says that, oh my God, you're such a fucking idiot. You forgot to buy bread. You can't even toast your toast properly, right? Probably consider leaving that relationship. But when it's us, when we're doing it, right? We're stuck with us. There's no leaving that relationship. If you're speaking to yourself negatively, if you're speaking to yourself harshly, if your I am statements are awful, if you are your own biggest bully, that is toxic. That is toxicity that you are repeatedly putting into your body, your mind, your soul, your system. And you're holding on to it, right? Sometimes I'll work with clients and it turns out their toxicity, right? Their negative self-talk, how they are speaking to themselves, how they are behaving towards themselves goes way, 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 way back. Way back, right? And they have been speaking to themselves and holding on to that toxicity in their body for years, decades, sometimes lifelong, that shit is toxic. And you know what? You can eat all the fucking vegetables you want. You can eat clean as you like. You can pay extra for organic. You can only drink natural spring water. You go collect yourself. You can cut everybody out of your life that is negative. But if you're still treating yourself like shit, there's toxicity right let me know in the comments i know i dropped a big truth bomb right but let me that's what i'm here for okay is to bring these awarenesses up into your conscious mind because that's where you have empowerment that's when you can make a change for when, so for anyone sitting there watching this who goes oh shit i do a little bit of that right? That's great. That's an awareness. First comes the awareness, comes up into your conscious mind. And second comes the decision to do something different. And third is taking an action on that decision to do something different. Okay. So first is awareness. Second is a decision. Third is taking an action. That's how you make change, right? But I'm sharing this with you so you have the awareness now. So now when you talk to yourself negatively, you're going to it's not going to happen automatically because I've brought it into your conscious mind having this conversation that you go, "Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that sometimes, right?" I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I've just been talking at you for a bit, so I'd just love to hear in the comments whether this is resonating, whether this is a harsh truth for you. Maybe you recognize that in somebody else. Maybe you go, oh, my insert person here is like that. They talk to themselves really badly. I love my best friend. I only tell her really nice things about herself, but she always, t you know, rejects it. Yep, <laughs> that's right. Right? Maybe your best friend needs a link to this video. 
maybe they need to watch this and have someone go, hey, listen, if you keep putting that into your brain, that becomes your truth, that becomes your reality. Warren says, well, time, fuck it, can be very cathartic. Just don't direct it to yourself. Yeah, it's great to have you on live too, Warren. Uh, Warren's a very busy man and he often has to catch up on replay. Right? How you speak to yourself is potentially the hidden toxicity in your body, in your mind. Who wants to know... Who wants to know, give me a yell, let me know, send me a thumbs up or whatever, all right? Who wants to know the simple practice that you can start doing today, which is the antidote which starts relieving some of this habit of talking to yourself like shit? Right? I want you to put practice in the comments if you want to know what the practice is. It's really simple to start changing how you speak to yourself, how you feel about yourself. Thank you for the hands up, Warren. Right, because it's all very well for me to jump on here and share. It definitely resonates. I had to take my consultant exam. I would always say, what if I can't do it? And I didn't. But then I told myself that I know my stuff. I'm good. Now I pass the exam and I talk nicely to myself. Shireen, that resonates so strongly with me. My beautiful, dear, darling father is a, a doctor of many years. He's recently retired doctor of over 50 years. And he had a very similar experience where it was his mindset and his self-talk was getting in the way with regards to a medical exam. And once he shifted his mindset to back himself, to believe in himself, to start understanding what everybody else knew about him, he actually got the highest score in the class. He won a prize for being the highest. He got the highest score, right? So he went from failing this exam multiple times to getting the highest score in that sitting, all because he shifted this. He shifted the way that he spoke to himself. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's a perfect example. So did I. You won the prize for the highest score. There you go, right? If this is not evidence of the power of your mindset, how you talk to yourself, this is crazy powerful stuff, people. Right, crazy powerful stuff. This has so much influence because how you talk to yourself goes straight into your subconscious and it becomes your truth. So today I wanna to share with you, before we finish up today, absolutely. So today I wanna to finish up, um, I'm gonna give you a simple practice, but if you want me to reach out to you, oh, I hate this mirror image thing. If you want me to reach out to you and have a messenger conversation, about how can you start addressing that historical self-talk that's possibly not so supportive? How can you start shifting into a space where you give how many fucks? Zero about what other people think about you, what they're saying about you, whatever, because you know what? They're not talking about you. FYI, hot dip, no one cares, right? If you want to have a discussion about a, a, a big shift that you know you need to go through, right, where you can live a life where you're just like living your best life, doing your thing, not really giving a shit what anybody thinks, I want you to put the word antidote into the comments and then I know I will reach out to you. That's a little flag for me to reach out to you and have a messenger chat about it, all right? So... Before we finish up, I'm going to give you this one simple practice. Now, I can't say it because um, um, uh, it's, it's tricky. Hang on a minute. Let me, I'm going to copy and paste it into the comments. Uh, no, I'm not. Hang on a minute. Here we go, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. All right. 
So what I'm going to give you antidote. Awesome. Thanks, Warren. This simple practice that I'm going to share with you today, I have been sharing a lot lately with my clients and with members of the 90 Day Zero Fuck System program, right? Because this has been coming up a lot lately, which as you know, is how I determine essentially what I'm going to come and talk to you guys about on Tuesday, right? So once I've had multiple of these conversations, I'm like, you know what? This is relevant for people. So four phrases to do this practice. This is very simple. You can do it as you go to sleep. You can do it in the shower. You can do it while you're driving your car. It's not hypnotic, super safe. All right. The four phrases that you want to remember, and I'm going to put this in the comments so you can come back to this anytime. Number one, phrase number one, I'm sorry. Phrase number two, please forgive me. Phrase number three, thank you. Phrase number four, I love you. Now this is a simple practice. It's called a forgiveness prayer. And it's called that, Ho'opono Opono, right? That's my best Hawaiian. Those four steps, I'm sorry, Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. This is going to press everybody's too easy button, right? Too good to be true. Can't be that easy. Probably doesn't work, right? And all these things that are going off in your mind that's like, is that it? Is that all I have to do? Right? These four phrases are incredibly powerful. This is a very old practice and there's actually... Um, versions of this in all sorts of indigenous cultures across the world. I recommend um, if you put Hopono Hopono into YouTube and you can get a video, YouTube video of like this for like four hours or eight hours or something. You don't have to do it for that long. That's crazy. But you can lie in bed and fall asleep listening to these four phrases on repeat in order and then you don't even have to think about what comes next which one's the next one right firstly i recommend that you do that so put your headphones in listen to it on repeat um the first you know there's two ways you can use this one you can close your eyes and you can imagine a stage and you can bring out everybody that you've ever met onto that stage, right? So bring out your close family and friends onto the stage. Bring out former colleagues and workmates. Bring out current colleagues and workmates. Bring out people you've met online, whatever it is, school friends, childhood friends. Imagine that everyone you ever have met in your lifetime, I know it's a big stage, is on that stage and you repeat this. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Six to ten times. The other way that you can use this is as a mirror practice, right? A mirror work practice or even just in your mind if you connect in and you are saying this to yourself. Now this self-forgiveness practice, utilizing these four phrases for self-forgiveness, guys, hugely powerful. Trust me on this. Give it a go. If you don't trust me, give it a go yourself, right? So whether you're listening to a YouTube or you're just saying these four phrases to yourself, Right? Hands on heart space if it helps. Hold a crystal if it helps. Whatever your jam is, right? And just say to yourself, into your heart space, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Do 
do that a few times before you go to sleep every night and then come back in this group and you tell me in two weeks how you're feeling towards yourself. I want to hear from everybody next Friday, end of next week. You do this every day. Repeat those four phrases with your hand on your heart. You really connect into the energy, the power of the words. I told you it was simple. Didn't say it was easy. I just said it was simple. I'm going to put the phrases in here, okay? So we've got... Actually, you know what? If you guys are still there, I want you to do it, all right? So just put one... I'm sorry. One. I'm sorry. If anyone is trying this right now, let's just notice the energy has gone. Oof. I'm sorry. Two. Please forgive me. Thank you, Warren. One, I'm sorry. Two, please forgive me. Three, thank you. Notice the energy in this space right now. I'm being quiet because I really want you to notice. Thank you, Warren, for I love you. These four statements are so powerful. One is showing repentance. I'm sorry. Two is asking for forgiveness. Please forgive me. Three is an expression of gratitude. Thank you. And four, I love you, is coming back to the ultimate universal energy that connects everything which is love right it's a high vibrational frequency of love makes your plants grow <laughs> makes your kids grow I'm sorry please forgive me thank you I love you and I want you to imagine, as you say this, however you utilize this practice in the next two weeks, I want you to imagine that this is slowly removing that toxicity from the negative self-talk habits. It's slowly, like you can be like Pac-Man, right? <laughs> right? Or clearing it out or whatever. You know, visualization works for you, but I want you to imagine as you utilize this, it is undoing that habit of embedded toxicity in your brain. Okay. I hope that's been useful. It's a very different energy to how we started, isn't it? Ooh. Take this with you and please come back and share either in this thread or just in the group. Just give us a post and say, I've been doing this practice for a week and this is how I feel. I've been doing this practice for two weeks and this is how I feel. All right? Let us know. 
Thanks, Shireen. So wonderful. Thank you for sticking around. I know that you've got to uh, you've got to head off shortly and save lives. We appreciate you. I appreciate all of you, particularly those who are on live. Kate, Warren, Jane, um, Ashley, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Remember, if you want to have a chat with me, you want me to reach out via messenger and give you a hey, a what's up, or a really dorky emoji or a gif, um, which is probably what I'll do. Drop the word antidote into this chat and I will know that that is for me to reach out to you and say hi. Um, thank you everyone again. Lovely to have you on. I'm just going to go and send all the love, 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 love. I love all of you. I love all my misfits. Um, and I appreciate all of you for jumping on. If you watch the replay, just chuck a hashtag replay and then play along like you're watching it live. Um, I'm going to head off. Uh, you have a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you next week at 1pm. I have to go sort out my Facebook problems because I'm still in New Zealand. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Bye. You too, Shireen. Bye.